Whew. Database normalization is one of those topics that you could spend hours talking about. Uh, many, many college courses are devoted to exactly this topic. It can get incredibly complicated and incredibly in-depth. We want to avoid a lot of this inside of this nugget. I want to introduce you to the concept of database normalization and the first three normal forms, give you enough material that you can go and research on your own and learn more about it if you need to, but hopefully you get a basic understanding of what it is. First of all, a paraphrase of the Wikipedia definition of database normalization. We are structuring a relational database in accordance with a series of normal forms in order to reduce data redundancy and improve data integrity. Let's just back up from that a little bit. So we'll go in reverse order here. Why do we normalize a database? To reduce data redundancy and improve data integrity. When you have the same data in multiple different places, there's this kind of Murphy's Law for database programmers and administrators that it's never going to agree. It's never going to be the same. To the extent possible and simple, you want to reduce the number of times, the number of duplications of a given piece of data. You don't want data redundant over and over and over. You want it stored in one place. You also want to improve your data integrity, and that means making sure that, for example, orders don't exist for customers when there's no customer, no matching customer record in the database. Database normalization is intending to solve a lot of that. And it does that by structuring the database into normal forms. Now, normal forms can get pretty complicated. There's 11 or so normal forms, I think, but they are progressive. And what I mean by that here, I've copied this from Wikipedia as well, is that a database that is in, say, the second normal form is also already in the, th the first normal form. If it's in the third normal form, it's in the second, which means it's also in the first. You get the idea. So it's progressive down the line here. You cannot be in compliance with a higher normal form without already being in compliance with all of the lower normal forms. One last thing to understand about normalization, and we're only going to talk up to the third normal form in this nugget, is that the third normal form is typically what we call a normalized database. This is just by convention. There's no rule that says third normal form databases are normalized. That's just when someone says, oh yeah, that database has been normalized. It means that database has been structured in accordance with the first three normal forms. So first normal form, each attribute has atomic data in it, i.e. you don't have any multi-valued fields. Take a look at this example table right here. Everything looks good until you get to the orders column. Now look at that, it's got dates, it's got uh, order quantity, it's got order item in it, it's got all this different data inside of one column, inside of one field. This is bad, this violates the first normal form. A better version of this would look something like this. Here, each individual point of data has been broken out into its own column. This is fairly common sense, and if you've ever worked with spreadsheets, I'm sure that top example kind of gave you a little bit of a shiver. You would much rather see it in this bottom example. Just for the simple fact of the matter that if you want to, say, add up the order quantity, now you can put a summation column at the bottom of that quantity, whereas here, how would you get the sum of the order quantities out of that column? It would be really hard and really difficult to do. So first normal form means that every attribute has atomic data. Every field has one and only one value, or one and only one piece of data in it. Second normal form, every non-prime attribute is dependent exclusively on the primary key. So taking that example we just looked at, now this is a bad example because while it was reliable or while it complied with the first normal form, it now violates the second normal form. A better version of the above would look like this. We would split it up into two entities. Notice what's happened up here in the top. I've got Sam Jones listed twice. I have Joe Smith listed twice. What's going on up there? Is this the, the customer table or is it the order table? Uh, which one does this ID, this unique ID, represent? It's difficult to tell. And we have a problem here, right? We could have Joe Smith listed at the top and then his name could be misspelled down here. Is that a different customer or is it the same customer with a misspelling? That duplication of data introduces the possibility of having bad data. So instead, what we'd rather do is simply have a customer table, a customer entity, and have a one-to-many relationship, there's our entity relationship diagrams again, with an orders entity, an orders table. And those orders would simply have this customer ID field that would reference back to the customer's table. And now we can see for every customer the individual order date, the quantity, and each of these orders has their own unique identifier. So I know that the order number four went to customer number two, Joe Smith, on this date for 20 picks at a price of 12 and a half. So this structure here now complies with the second normal form. And then lastly, to ensure our database is perfectly normalized, I say that with a, a bit of sarcasm, we want to meet third normal form, where all the attributes are determined only by the primary key. This one can be a little bit difficult to get your head around, but I think the example will help. So again, I have my good example from the previous slide that complied with the second normal form, but it violates the third normal form. 
And why is this bad? Well, look over here. Order item and order price kind of go together, but they don't necessarily go with order ID because there could be another order down here that had widgets at that price. And what if this listed widgets at a different price? What would we be trying to say there? Was it a different product or was it a different price given? So how do we make this better? How do we make this a compliance with the third normal form? And the answer is we pull the order data out into a separate entity as well. So now I've got my customer's entity. I've got my items entity. And then finally, I've got my third entity, my orders. And the orders simply use an item ID to reference the items here so that now I know that slips always cost 36. And if someone has item ID number one right here, I know that they have paid 36 for the slip. We can multiply that by the quantity if we need to and learn what the total price of the order was. What have we done? We've ensured that all of the attributes inside of this table, inside of this orders table, are dependent only on the order ID. And everything else that is not is inside of its own entity, either customers or items. This database here is compliant with the third normal form. So that is the very quick rundown of database normalization. Some of it is common sense, I think. Some of it takes a little bit of work to get your head around. If you want to understand more, you can look up and research a lot about normalizing databases and what it means and why you do it on the internet. And I recommend that you do that if you're unfamiliar with it. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.